Welcome once again to Fertility Live Stream, July 5, 2022. This is the IVF Cycle Planning Ovarian Stimulation. Welcome to Fertility Live Stream featuring Dr. Oybek Rastamov. At his previous post at the busy IVF Center of Central Manchester Hospitals, he was able to obtain and enhance his complete comprehensive knowledge on assigned conception. Through his extensive experience in general obstetrics and gynecology, he confidently managed all the areas of this specialty, including, of course, advanced gynecological ultrasound scanning, minimally invasive gynecologic surgery, and benign gynecology and obstetrics. This afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Oybek will present to us IVF cycle planning, ovarian stimulation, and with that, Dr. Oybek will present, and please do not hesitate to leave a comment on any messages in the comment section where this live stream is being broadcasted across LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and other social media platforms. Those who are watching us also right now can simply message or send in your questions via rostomov.com.au or simply type in your questions by sending a direct message to our official Facebook page. Disclaimer notice to everybody that different types of patients has different results and for more accurate diagnosis on your concerns, you may refer and consult with your respective GPs or physicians. Everyone, let's welcome right now, Dr. Oybek Rastamov. Good afternoon, Doc. And good afternoon. Thanks, JC, for a kind introduction. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, this live stream or watching the video. Okay, so we are moving into a much more exciting part of IVF treatment. So today we will be discussing ovarian stimulation. So we're still on a cycle planning stage. It's actually a stage before IVF cycle. So, and uh, one of the steps of this stage is deciding what kind of drugs to use, which drug to use for ovarian stimulation and deciding what dose to give to each patient. So essentially we have to individualize um, the usage of drug and the dose for uh, for each patient. So in this cycle, I explain how we can achieve that. So, um, okay, so let us start with uh, deciding which drug to use. So now let us review um, the physiology of uh, female reproduction. So as you can see from this chart, and during menstrual cycle, pituitary gland produce, produces two different hormones, FSH and LH hormone, which stimulates ovaries, follicles of the ovaries to produce estradiol and uh, result in the, um, the growth of one of the follicles and ovulation. So um, that's all regulated by uh, the pituitary gland and the uh, ovary plays an um, important role, uh, the, the main role uh, in terms of achieving um, a successful pregnancy. So in IVF cycle, essentially we mimic what happens in uh, naturally. Uh, simply we, by giving higher dose of stimulation, we try and get more eggs than one, which happens in natural um, fertility. So uh, like in yesterday's presentation, we discussed uh, pituitary should be shut down during the cycle, otherwise it can interfere with our cy uh, cycle and we can shut down pituitary using agonist or antagonist drug. So then we use FSH drugs, uh, which is a FSH hormone, which, which is very similar to the FSH hormone produced naturally in, uh, in from pituitary gland. And um, so we give these um, injections from second or third day of the menstrual cycle. And uh, usually in average, it lasts about 10 days. In some patients, it can last much longer. In some patients, it can last shorter. So the average duration of uh, stimulation is uh, 10 days. So uh, you can see um, uh, from the slide, it, this slide demonstrates how FSH um, can stimulate ovaries. In ovaries, you, um, there are a lot of small follicles. Each follicle has got receptors for FSH, which is called FSH receptor. So, and if you have a FS, if you give patient FSH from outside, this receptor gets activated and that um, activates growth of the small follicle to become dominant follicle. That's what we want during IVF cycle. So this can be done by using this FSH drugs. So there are a number of different FSH drugs in the market. So there are different categories of the drugs. So generally, we can divide them into two large categories. One is FSH-only uh, drugs. Second one is combination of FSH and LH. Like we saw in the previous slide, FSH um, can stimulate the ovaries, then LH can support growth of the follicles. So that's why sometimes we decide to use 
FSH LH combined drug and some cycles we decide to use just FSH alone uh, drugs. So now if you look at the FSH drugs, um, these, these drugs do not contain any LH, they contain only FSH hormone. So these are most commonly used drugs. So uh, there are two different type of this kind of drugs. One type is called recombinant and the second type is purified. So the difference is recombinant drug is, um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a molecular recombinant of uh, human FSH, which is prepared in the lab. It's like kind of artificial FSH drug, which has exact same uh, subunits like alpha, beta set subunits like human FSH. So, but it is created artificially in the lab. So, and there are four big different categories of these drugs. So these are called polytropin alpha, polytropin beta, polytropin delta, and polytropin. So it's important to know which drug uh, belongs to which group because when we are actually um, um, adjusting and improving, uh, tailoring the treatment for each patient as we go along this IVF cycle, it's important to know which drug belongs where and which drug to choose. Uh, depending on their outcomes. So in terms of the second type of drugs is a purified, they are biological, they're not artificially made in the lab, but it is purified urinary FSH, which means actually, actually it's human FSH, it's, um, it is um, extracted from the urine of menopausal uh, women. So it is not artificial, it's biological FSH. So now if you look into the subgroups and uh, there are three, commonly used drugs in folytropin alpha, which is gonalev, benfolate, and ovilib. Pretty much these are same drugs, um, which use same technology, which is recombinant and same methodology. So, and the folytropin beta is a polystem in purigon. This use same technology, which is recombinant, but different methodology to, ex to uh, create this drug in the lab. So third type is a folytropin delta that's uh, its an own uh, category and the, the, the drug called Recavel is, is a folytropin delta. Use the same technology but different method. Then a fourth type is a colifolytropin alpha, which is Elomba. So and the, the difference of this drug compared to other drugs, this is only long acting FSH drug. So all other FSH drugs you have to give at least once a day. Um, so because uh, they, they, you know, they, 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 they leave the body after about 24 hours gradually, uh, but, but Elonva lasts much longer. So Elonva you can give just once, that lasts about seven days. So it's very similar to Purigon, but it's much long acting uh, drug. So uh, in terms of purified urinary FSH, there are like these drugs like Brevel, Petronix and Fostimon, these are uh, FSH drugs, they're biological, but FSH only. They do, none of these drugs contain uh, LH. They may contain traces of LH, uh, these ones, purified ones, not the recombinant ones. They may contain trace of LH, but generally they are FS purified, highly purified FSH drugs. So now we move on to the second category of the drugs. These drugs contain FSH and LH. So FSH is a mass hormone uh, for stimulation of ovaries. We cannot stimulate the ovaries using LH. So the, here the main drug is FSH. LH is add on additional drug which can support um, the growth of the follicles. Again, here we have two categories, recombinant FSH and LH and purified FSH and LH drugs. And the re recombinant FSH and LH drug, we have a one drug which is called pergoveris. This is folytropin alpha plus a recombinant LH. So if we can see here folytropin alpha, which is gonalev, and so it contains gonalev and plus additional LH recombinant LH hormone we will see later. So then second drug in this category is a biological purified um, drug, uh, which is urinary HMG. Again, it's urinary HMG, very similar to this category of drugs, and that's called menopause. So difference um, of this drug is, first it is biological, it's not recombinant, similar to purified, and it also contains um, uh, LH. It actually contains HCG, which acts like LH. So um, yeah, that's called uh, menopause. So now we got another category of drug is uh, LH only, which is a recombinant LH drug, so which is lutropin alpha, and that's, its name is Luverus. 
So a lot of patients may use a low virus. So low virus used as additional drug. We cannot stimulate the ovaries using LH, like we said. So, but we can add low virus to FSH drugs as additional supporting uh, the hormonal uh, uh, treatment. So yeah, pretty much these are all the drugs. There may be some uh, different brand names uh, in some categories, but you can put any uh, uh, drug which is used, used for ovarian stimulation into this category. Yeah, so, um, okay, so yeah, here we covered the drugs in terms of which drug to choose in um, drive cycles. These drugs have been studied in a number of research studies, and these drugs have been studied in a group of women, and they are found to be uh, very similar to each other in terms of efficacy. So we believe that in general population, all the drugs have a similar efficacy. But in individual patient, individual person, there may be difference um, in, in, in terms of um, and the effect of the drugs. So there's, there, there is individual variation within the population. Um, so mainly depending on expression of um, uh, uh, FSH receptors in individual person. So um, yeah, so general guidance is uh, we can pretty much pick any drug as a first uh, treatment. So then, um, then some specialists decide to either repeat doing IVF using same drug, some specialists may add uh, some other drugs. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, so usually specialists have got their first line drug and then um, either stay with the same drug or change to different drugs. So it's essentially uh, will be decision of the specialist after analyzing uh, the IVF cycle. So in certain group of patients, certainly you should give certain type of drugs. For example, patients uh, who have a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, uh, typically these are patients who have amenorrhea and they should be given LH drug as well, in addition to FSH, because they don't produce their own LH, they need require and need to have LH. These are these type of drugs, FSH and LH combined, or FSH drug and plus with a combination with with LH. Okay, so now we have covered the drug types for ovarian stimulation, and now we go to the dose. Okay, have, we have decided. Okay, we've seen the patient. We decided that we are going to use certain drug. Let us say gonadotropin. So then how we decide what dose of stimulation to give to each patient. Uh, so, okay, so um, in order to decide that, we have to establish what's actually our objective. So our objective is to get optimal ovarian stimulation. So optimal means that getting enough eggs, which gives best chance of pregnancy without overstimulating or understimulating here. So, it generally, if you go by research evidence, so essentially you want to have approximately 15 eggs to give an optimal number, optimal chance of pregnancy, and which is achievable in some patients, which is not achievable in other patients, depending on their ovarian reserve. So overall, um, uh, you should try and avoid low uh, response, which is less than five eggs. Sometimes it's not avoidable, but we should do our best to avoid having poor response, which is getting less than five eggs in per IVF cycle, or ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, excessive response uh, to this to the stimulation. So yeah, so our objective is to get optimal number of eggs, which is in the range of five to 20 eggs. So how can we achieve that? Uh, so first, in order to achieve that, we have to establish individual persons, uh, patients, ovarian reserve. So um, in the group of uh, women in the same age, uh, women may have a high, medium, and low ovarian result. How do we establish that? We discussed in previous cycles, we can establish by uh, using four markers of ovarian result, age, AMH, antral follicle count, and FSH. In patients who had IVF cycle previously, we use that cycle information to check how they responded, and that also helps us to ascertain um, individual person's ovarian result. So it can really vary. So once we establish individual person's ovarian reserve, then we will decide what dose of ovarian stimulation we give. Let us say um, these are the drugs for um, stimulation. We chose one drug, let us say gonade, for example. So uh, then we established a patient, let us say the patient, first patient called Sarah, her ovarian reserve is high. So if she has a very high ovarian reserve, like for example, 
patients with PCOS have a very high ovarian reserve. For those patients, you need to give low dose of stimulation. So you can see the patients with a very high ovarian reserve should have low dose of ovarian stimulation drug. So low dose generally is defined dose which is less than 150 units. So, and so let us say second patient, uh, let us say Nicole, her ovarian reserve is medium, so it's not uh, high, not low, just average for her age. Let us say she has AMH of 15, her age is 32. For her, we should give average dose of ovarian stimulation. So average to average. So, and let us say the third uh, person, um, um, let us say um, um, Emily, her ovarian reserve is very low. Um, so, and um, um, let us say she has AMH of less than five, then we need to give her higher dose of ovarian, uh, have a higher dose of ovarian stimulation drug. So normally it's higher than 300. So um, by adjusting that, so if, if ovarian reserve is low, we need to push a little bit harder. If ovarian reserve is high, we need to push a little bit slower. And, and give medium dose to medium um, ovarian reserve to achieve optimal um, response. Optimal response, as we said, is uh, getting sufficient number of eggs without overstimulating or understimulating. So um, yeah, so um, that is um, um, yeah. So we discussed so drugs and dose. So in that cycle, in in that step of cycle planning, which is very critical step. We, uh, we decide which drug to use over, for ovarian stimulation and what dose to use um, by reviewing patients' previous history, their ovarian reserve, and then tailoring the drug and dose to each individual uh, patient. Yeah, so uh, thanks, JC. This is the uh, end of my presentation. Thank you so much, Doc, for that. And there you have it. That was the IVF cycle planning, ovarian stimulation. Now we'll move on with a couple of questions. And for those who are watching right now, feel free to throw in any messages or questions in our social media pages where the live stream is being broadcasted. Or you can message us at rastamov.com.au. Now, Dr. Oybek, here is my first question. What is the difference of ovarian stimulation and the hyperstimulation? Um, yeah, so, um, okay, so um, in, when we do ovarian stimulation, uh, some patients can have ovarian hyperstimulation, which, which, which is called ovarian OHSS. So ovarian hyperstimulation can be diagnosed according to the symptoms. Usually it's diagnosed after the egg pickup. So, um, yeah, in ovarian stimulation, uh, in normal stimulation, we, uh, we aim to get approximately 15 eggs in average, depending on ovarian reserve. If you end up getting too many eggs, if you end up overstimulating the patient, then, then the patient has a high risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. So um, yeah, so it's called OHSS. All right, thank you so much, Doc, for uh, explaining that. Now, speaking of eggs, can we actually predict, you know, exact numbers of eggs of a woman can get in a cycle? Um, and a, a short answer is no, we can actually predict we can we can predict whether they're going to have a high high response low response or medium response mm -hmm. but we cannot predict exact number mm -hmm. um so um we can say okay probably you will get in range of 10 to 15. so and um, essentially the number of eggs women get in each cycle depends on their baseline ovarian reserve if, mm -hmm. if they have a high ovarian reserve they tend to get more eggs second how many follicles they have at the time of starting stimulation in the cycle. There's something called cycle to cycle variation. So that's approximately 30%. Let us say same uh, person, woman, can have uh, 20 follicles in one cycle and next cycle they can have uh, 15 follicles. That's normal. So the cycle follicle number can change every cycle and that's one of the determining factors, how many eggs they do, they get. And also uh, dose of the stimulation, uh, how, how much of FSH drug we give and the duration and monitoring of the cycle. There are a number of moving parts. So, and this is why it's impossible to predict exact number of eggs uh, women uh, can get, but we can tailor, we can monitor, we can, um, we can adjust the dose and treatment to try and get the optimal number as we go along during IVF cycle. 
All right. Thank you so much, Doc, for explaining that. Now, again, you're seeing on your screens as well, of course, the uh, websites, uh, rostomov.com.au, adorafertility.com.au. Please do visit those websites. And thank you once again, Doc Oybeck, for that extensive presentation and for enlightening us with your answers to the questions. And uh, this has been the IVF cycle planning ovarian stimulation. Now, Dr. Oybeck, please do invite them once again of what they will look forward to tomorrow. Yeah, so we plan to continue this daily um, live streams. So uh, tomorrow we will uh, discuss planning fertilization method. So it explains how we decide which, uh, what type of fertilization method to use in IVF, whether we should use IVF, whether we should use ICSI for fertilization. So um, yeah, so we will allude, allude to that uh, tomorrow. Thanks everyone for joining the live stream. So I will catch you tomorrow and have a lovely uh, evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. Again, to everyone, please go ahead and check out all our social media pages, our website, rostomob.com.au, for more information. Disclaimer notice as well that different types of patients has different results, and for more accurate diagnosis on your concerns, you may refer and consult with your respective GPs or physician. Tomorrow, same time, same social media channels for another exciting discussion, together, of course, with Dr. Oybek Rostomov. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.